Welcome everyone, my name is Anna, and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. In a few moments, we're going to hear a great message. But before we do, we're going to worship God through our giving. Out of the 22 ministry partners, New Hope Windward financially supports one local organization dedicated to bringing value and support to those with intellectual disabilities is Special Olympics Hawaii. New Hope Windward has not only provided financial support for many years, but every year we send a team of volunteers to help support their various Olympic type sports events, games and competitions. Our partnership with Special Olympics Hawaii helps to ensure that every individual with a mental disability can participate in their sporting events, as well as health, educational and leadership programs without any cost to them or their families. Our heart as a church is to care about and make a tangible difference in the things that matter to Jesus. Even when faced with a demanding schedule of ministry, Jesus, moved by compassion, often stopped in the midst of what He was doing for those physically, mentally, and spiritually challenged, and readily extended healing, kindness, and genuine care to them. When we do the same, Jesus takes notice. In Hebrews chapter 6, it says, God is fair and He will remember all the work you have done. He will remember that you showed your love to Him by helping His people and that you continue to help them. A couple of weeks ago, Special Olympics Hawaii held a bocce ball event at Waiau District Park. New Hope Windward showed up in full force to support the games and the many athletes who participated. Our mission as a church is to do all that we can to extend Jesus' love, compassion, and healing to the disadvantaged and those in need. Your generosity and faithful giving are making a tangible difference in building lives and extending value and worth to the many mentally disabled in our local community. And Jesus is so proud of you. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. Or you can scan the QR code. Also, by clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website, where you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, you once said that you desire mercy and not sacrifice because love for and compassion towards others rank at the top of your priority list. There are many disadvantaged and disabled in our community who need love, encouragement, and support. Thank you that as a church, we have the amazing opportunity to partner with Special Olympics Hawaii to provide an environment where value and acceptance are fostered. We are thankful for many at New Hope Windward who sacrificially give towards making a lasting difference for your kingdom. We worship and honor you through our giving today. In your name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited that you're here for service. We have a special welcome gift for you. It's a New Hope Windward stainless steel tumbler. Simply stop by guest services in the lobby after service to pick one up. Or you can text the word NEW to 808-736-3777 and we'll mail you a tumbler as our way of saying, Welcome to New Hope. We'd love to stay connected with you this week. The easiest way to do that is by following us on social media. You're welcome to take out your phones right now and follow us on Facebook and Instagram or simply use the QR code on the screen. We'd also love to hear from you. And this is a great way to stay in touch with us. Today, as we kick off our brand new message series, what's your purpose? To get the most out of it, be sure to jump into a small group where you'll have the opportunity to grow stronger in your relationship with Christ alongside others. We have great groups for men, women, and couples. Simply go to our website or text GROUPS to 808-736-3777 to find a group that works for you. Also, there are free small group materials for this new message series available now. Simply go to our website and click the Download Guides tab and you can access all of our small group guides there. Many of us have a pretty good idea of what we're good at our strengths, skills, natural abilities, and giftings. But have you ever wondered why God uniquely designed you to be wired that way? Is it primarily work or career related? Or does God have an even greater purpose in mind? The Bible says that God created us with a destiny to fulfill the purposes He's laid out for us. We'd love to help you figure out your specific God-given purposes. 
As a part of our What's Your Purpose message series, Pastor Dave will be teaching a two-part workshop called Discover Your Purpose. The workshop starts in a couple of weeks on Wednesday, August 24th at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. To sign up, either go to guest services in the lobby at Regal after service or go to our website at nhww.org. You won't want to miss out. Well, that's all the announcements we have for you. Today, we have a great message. Would you join me in welcoming Pastor Dave? Good morning, everyone. Great to have all you with us here today. And if you're new here, we're one church that meets in multiple locations. And so I want to greet all of you here at Regal Cinemas and all the various theaters. I want to say hi to everybody at the plaza across the street, everybody at Ann Pearl and Kaneohe. I want to say hi to all the amazing men and women in the correctional centers. And of course, all of you joining us online. Church family, let's do what we do. Let's welcome our church family that's joining us today. Aloha, everybody. Awesome to have you here with us. Uh, if you're new here, my name's Dave. I'm one of the pastors on the team. I'm excited because we're launching a new series today. You know, uh, there's a quote I came across that really spoke to me. Mark Twain said this, the two most important days of your life are number one, the day you were born, and number two, the day you figure out why you were born. Have you ever wondered what on earth are you here for? Have you ever wondered, man, what are God's plans and purposes for my life? Uh, why did God make me? Well, I'm excited because we're launching a brand new series called What's Your Purpose? And over the next six weeks, we're going to be talking about answering this question, what on earth are you here for? Why did God create you? Why did he make you? Why did he put you here on earth? And I think this is really important because I think a lot of people, when they put their head on their pillow at night, a lot of people, you know, I think at times they sit there and go, I'm not fulfilled. I mean, think about our lives. We get up in the morning, we go to work, we come home, we watch some TV, and we go to bed. Next day, what do we do? We get up in the morning, we go to work, come home, watch some TV, go to bed. What do you do the next day? Get up in the morning, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed. And, and, after, and, and maybe on the weekends we try to have some fun, right? But I mean, isn't there more to life than that? I think a lot of people feel unfulfilled. There's I think a lot of people think there's got to be more to life than this. You know, I've, uh, as a pastor, I've had the privilege to meet a lot of people who are very successful in life and they make a lot of money. And one of the common denominators I've found in many, not all, but in many of the successful, wealthy people is this. Even though they make a lot of money, a lot of them will tell me, Dave, I'm just not fulfilled. They'll say, where am I going? Why am I here? Why did God put me here on earth? And I think that's a great question for us to ask because you can make a lot of money and still not live out God's plans and purposes for your life. And so if you've been around our church, we've had a couple series in the past called Discovering Your Purpose or What's My Purpose. But this series is an advanced course on what God's plans and purposes are for your life. So the previous series we've had on purpose were like phase one. This is phase 2.0. This is an advanced course that I think you'll find helpful. So let me ask you this question. All of our locations, what do you think is the starting point for you to discover why God made you and why he put you here on earth? Like, what do you think the starting point is? Well, let me illustrate it this way. Take a look at this up on the screen. Do you know what this is? This is called a baby cage. And in the 1930s in Britain, these were extremely popular. Now, in order to know what the purpose is for the baby cage, we have to check with its inventor, its creator. If you want to know the purpose, you got to ask its inventor. So I did some research, and the inventor of the baby cage uh, is a woman named Emma Stone. And Emma talks, or excuse me, Emma Reed. And she explained that, <laughs> Emma Stone is an actress, okay, sorry. <laughs> You're like, oh, Emma Stone, make that back in the 1930, 1930, she looks good, huh? <laughs> Never knew she was that old, okay, sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> she explained that the purpose of the baby cage was this. It was to provide children and babies in high-rise apartments a haven because they didn't have gardens to play in. They're in these crowded high-rise communities. And so the purpose was for the baby to have some fresh air outdoors. 
So what, what a parent would do is they would buy this baby cage, then they would strap it to the side of this high rise, high above the street. And then they would, during the day, um, they would place their child in it and go, oh, honey, have some fun before you die. Um, <laughs> and uh, obviously, uh, the, the, the baby cage kind of lost some popularity for obvious safety reasons. But, but how did we learn the purpose for the baby cage? Well, we had to go to its creator. And the same is true for you. If you want to know why God put you here on earth, you need to go to your creator, the one who made you, the one who the Bible says formed you in your mother's womb. You need to go to God and you need to look at his owner's manual for life, the Bible, to see what his scriptures say are part of his plans and purposes for your life. A lot of times people say to me, Dave, what's my purpose? And I always say back to them, actually, God has multiple plans and purposes for your life. He doesn't have just one purpose. And, and so we're going to help you understand what the scriptures say. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to be helping you in the days, weeks, months, and even years ahead. Understand this. Why did God put you here on earth? You're not just here to survive. You're here to live out the plans for which he created you for before you even took your first breath. So honestly, I think this could be one of the most important series you've ever attended in your life. And I'm so thankful that you're here. So I'm going to go over key verses, but I want to start with one that kind of talks about the direction we're going to go today. And I'm going to show you a popular verse. Many of you probably heard this verse hundreds of times, um, but, but hang with me as I show it to you. So Romans, uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I forgot to cover these. So you know how I said we got to start with our creator to understand our purpose? Look what Ephesians says. It says, it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. In other words, uh, the apostle Paul said, hey, you want to know why God put you here on earth? It starts with having a relationship with Christ. It starts with connecting with him. Look at this next verse on it. It says everything, absolutely everything, that includes you and me, got started in Christ and finds its what? Its purpose in him. If you want to know why God made you, you got to start in Christ, in your relationship with him. Okay, so let's go to this, this popular verse I was mentioning before that people know. Because it, it, it's directly tied into God's purpose for your life. A lot of people don't know that. Romans 8.28. Have you ever heard this verse before? It says, we know, this is an amazing promise. We know that in all things that you go through, that I go through. God works for the good of those who love him. So this is an amazing promise. God says, hey, everything you go through, if you love God, the tragic things, the terrible things, the awful things, God says, I will work some good. I'll pull some good even out of the tragedies, even out of your depression, even out of your difficult marriage, even out of that job you want to quit. I will work some good for those who love me. Now, I want to say this. This is not a promise for non-Christians. It's a promise for those who love God. It's an amazing promise. No matter what you go through, God can pull some good out of that. But a lot of times we just stop here and we go, oh, that's such a great promise. But let's look at the rest of the verse. It says that God works all things for the good for those who love him, who have been called. Say that word, called. Called, called according to his purpose. Okay, this is very important. We could draw a line between the words called and purpose. And I want to explain what this word called means. It's actually a Greek word that means kletos. Everybody say kletos. Very good. Now, what does kletos mean? It means that you have been invited by God. You've been called by God. You've been selected by God. You've been appointed by God according to his plans and purposes for your life here on earth. In other words... You are called by God to live for God. Did you know, people come to me and they say, well, pastor, you're called. You're called to be a pastor. And that's part of God's plan for my life, but that's not his entire plan. But did you know that you're called just as much as I'm called? And you are called according to his plans and purposes for your life. And the Bible is filled with people who are called. Think about it. 
uh, Noah was called by God and he responded. Moses was called by God and he responded to his purposes for his life. Uh, Abraham was called and by God and Abraham responded. Think about the Old Testament, Nehemiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Daniel and Hosea and Joel and David and Solomon. They were all called by God and they responded. Then go to the New Testament. Who was called? Think of all the disciples that were called. Uh, you have Peter, Paul, and Mary. I'm not talking about the band. All the people who laughed were the extremely old people in the group here. <laughs> I'm kidding. But all of these people were called, and guess what? You were called too. You were called by God. You are not an accident. Your, your parents may not have planned you, but God did. There are accidental parents, but there are no accidental babies. And that's why, by the way, the Bible says abortion isn't right. Because God has plans and purposes for every single baby. And he has plans and purposes for you. Can I get a good amen? amen? So God has called you just like he's called these saints. Now, some of you might have seen in the news the last few weeks this huge mega millions lottery. Did you guys hear about this lottery that was going on? The pot got up to $1.3 billion. Now, the after-tax earnings, if the, if the winner took a lump sum, means they would take home $554 million. Okay, listen, if you ever win the lottery, here's what you need to do. You need to come see me after service. I'm serious. And you give me the money, and I will put it to good use. You win this lottery, I will buy the Windward Mall so we finally have our own building, everybody. Yeah, come on now. So you just come see me, okay? But, you know, imagine if you were the, the lottery ticket winner of this Mega Millions lottery. And imagine that phone call coming in to tell you that you won $1.3 billion. Question, would you want to make sure you answered that call? You guys are like, yeah, 100%. Well, although that would be a very important call, can I just be honest? Based on God's word, God is calling you. The phone is ringing. And his calling on your life is far more important than, willing, than winning millions of dollars. And we see that in scripture because the Bible says that if we fulfill God's calling on our lives, that the rewards that we get in heaven Far, out, out, far exceed the winnings of a multi-million dollar lottery. Far, out, far exceed it. I tell you, I could do in it six months of sermons on just the rewards that you will receive in heaven if you live out your calling. Now, here's the challenge. A lot of people want to know why God put them here on earth, but a lot of people don't know what that is. A lot of people want to live God's purposes, but they don't know what his plans and purposes are. And so I'm so glad you're here because we as a church are committed to helping you discover what that is. Because the truth is, a lot of Christians aren't living out God's calling on their lives. They're living out their own calling. It's not that they don't want to live out God's calling. It's just that they get distracted. They kind of fall into the, the rhythms of life and they can miss the very purpose for which God put them here on earth. And I don't want that to be you. So I'm going to go over some things in scripture. Uh, we've, we've looked at about a hundred different scriptures on what the Bible says about your calling. And I've synthesized them into about eight things that you need to know about your calling, what you need to know about God's plans and purposes for your life. Um, but before I get into that, I want to say this, this is very important. Pastor TJ mentioned this last week. Um, he said this, my career is not my calling. Everybody say this out loud. Ready? One, two, three. My career is not my calling. Uh, let me say this. Your family is not your calling. Oh, got your attention, didn't I? Now, let me be clear. Your career is part of your calling. It's part of God's plans for your life. And so is your family. But your primary purpose in life is not your family. Your primary purpose in life is not your career. If your career was your calling, watch this, then when you retire, your calling would end. 
But the Bible is very clear that there is no retirement from your calling. Let me give you an example. You guys remember the movie Prince of Egypt? Remember <laughs> Moses? And he goes to Pharaoh and he's like, let my people go. You guys remember that? Is anybody listening to me right now? Come on, man. You help a brother out. You guys make me feel alone up here. Everyone's like, oh, God, I hate when he sings. Uh. <laughs> so do you know how old Moses was when God called him to go to Pharaoh to say, release my people from Egypt? How old do you think Moses was? He was 80 years old. So he probably said it like this to Pharaoh. Let my people go. <laughs> You're never too old to live out your calling for your life. Some of you are retired and you're still called. Do you know how old Abraham was when God called him from Haran, the, the town? He was 75 years old. He had retired. He was totally wealthy. And God says, hey, I want you to go somewhere. Where? Don't worry. Just go. I've called you. And Abraham did and became a father of many nations. And so if you're retired, please hear these words. You are not retired from your calling. God still has plans and purposes for your life. If you're breathing, God has plans and purposes for your life still. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So let's get into some of these things about your calling that I think you'll find helpful. You might want to take some screenshots of this. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot this. This is, I, I heard it this way. I love this. Okay. Your, your job is what you're paid for. Your calling is what you're made for. Because remember, your career is not your calling. So your job, it's what you're paid for. But your calling is what God made you for. And we want to help you discover that. So let's get into what I need to know about my life's calling. Number one, if you're taking notes, I am called for, say it with me, I'm called for God's purposes. What does that mean? It means that you're called for God's purposes, not your purposes. It means you're, you were put here on earth for his dreams for your life, not your dreams for your life. It means that, that God put you here on earth for his plans and purposes for your life, not your plans and your purposes for your life. Uh, and this is where the rub can come, right? Because we have plans. We have dreams. And what I found in my own life is a lot of my plans and dreams often align with God's plans and dreams. But then I also know that some of my plans and dreams haven't aligned with God's plans and purposes. So let, let's look in the Bible at a person who was living his plans and purposes for his life, his own calling, and then how he switched to God's plans and purposes and what happened. His name was Saul. And Saul was this rabbi. He was trained by a, an amazing uh, rabbi of the day named Gamaliel. Uh, Saul was very versed in the scriptures and Saul hated Christians. Saul hated the message of Jesus. Saul persecuted Christians. Here's what he did. He went from house to house. They opened up the door. He dragged men and women out, and he would take them and make sure they got thrown in jail where they were punished and tortured. Why? For being Christians. Paul was a murderer of Christians. Then one day, Paul was on this road. Uh, Paul is also called Saul in the Bible. And, and he's on this road called Damascus. And he was going to take more Christians to throw them in the jail to be punished. And on that road, Saul, also known as Paul, had an encounter with Jesus. And all of a sudden, this message of Jesus became an encounter of Jesus. And for some of you, you've heard the message of Jesus, but you haven't had an encounter with him yet. I'm praying that you have an encounter where you experience him in a relationship. So Paul experiences Paul... Uh, Paul experiences God on this road to Damascus and his life is changed as he began a relationship with Jesus. And all of a sudden he realizes, whoa, okay, God's plans for my life is not to kill Christians. <laughs> it's actually to help bring more people into God's family. And Paul then started to move from his plans to God's plans to being an apostle for Jesus Christ. What's an apostle? It's a church planter. It's a missionary. It's a pastor. It's a spiritual father. And Paul dedicated the rest of his life, here it is, learning and living out God's plans and purposes for his life. What happened after that? Well, multiple churches were started. Uh, Christianity was 
virtually singly, single-handedly spread throughout so much of Europe by Paul's churches that he planted with God's help, obviously. And then Paul penned almost half of the New Testament. And get this, because Paul went from his plans to now God's plans for his life, literally millions and millions of people over the centuries have benefited from Paul's ministry as they've read his words. That's the power of you switching from your plans to God's plans. Listen, God's plans for your life are far better than your plans. I'm not saying you're going to like everything he has for you. There are things he's asked me to do. I'm like, I don't want to do that. But his plans are far better. It is an amazing adventure to live out God's plans and purposes for your life. So you are called for whose purposes? Say it with me out loud. One, two, three. God's purposes. Super good. Okay, here's another thing to write down. Um, what else do you need to know about your life's calling? Well, your sins and your mistakes, they don't change your calling. Aren't you glad for that? I love this. My sins, my mistakes do not change God's calling on my life. Listen to me very carefully, and I especially want to talk to all of you who are incarcerated watching this. No matter how many times you've sinned and no matter how bad your mistakes, God's calling on your life has not changed at all. Paul was a murderer, and God's calling did not change on his life. And to all of us at all of our other locations, no matter what sins you have done or are doing or will do in the future, God's call on your life is permanent until you, the day you die. It will never change. And so your sins, your mistakes, uh, your flaws do not change God's plan for your life. Look at how Paul talked about this. I love it. He said, by calling me into his service, Jesus has judged me trustworthy even though I used to be a blasphemer and a persecutor of the church and contemptuous towards Christians. Even though I sinned and had so many mistakes, mercy, however, was shown to me because while I lacked faith, I acted in ignorance. Paul said, I did a lot of dumb things when I was younger before I met Jesus. Uh, how many of you would say that you've done a lot of dumb things when you're younger? How many of you? Just no shame. I, I, my, both my hands are up. You know, dumb things when you're younger. Yeah, well, uh, you know what that, those dumb things can do? That's training to become an apostle. Because Paul did a lot of dumb things, and yet he still was powerfully used when he finally said this, okay, Jesus, I surrender to your plans and purposes for my life. So your sins don't change God's calling. Uh, the sins that you haven't even committed yet in the future don't change God's calling on your life. No matter how many bad decisions you make, it will not change God's calling on your life. Here, let me say it this way. God's calling on your life is permanent. Everybody say permanent. permanent. It's permanent. So whether you live out his plans or not, they'll never change. God will constantly be calling you. Hey, I've got, a, I got plans and purposes for you. Pick up the phone. I got plans and purposes for you tomorrow, Monday. Pick up the phone. Tuesday, I got plans and purposes for you. Pick up the phone. It, it will never change no matter what you do. Why? Because... Your sins and mistakes don't change God's call for you. So let me say it this way. You might want to take a screenshot for this, uh, of this. God has no plan B for me. <laughs> He's got no plan B. Everybody say this out loud. One, two, three. God has no plan B for me. Very good. Uh, you might want to put that in the chat, those of you watching online. A lot of people think this, and I certainly felt this. Uh, they think, I've really screwed up, so there's no way that God could use me. You know why some of you don't volunteer? You don't think God could use you because of your sins. Some of you, you, you haven't stepped into God's plan because you think, I'm disqualified because I've sinned too much. I'm still sinning. God has no plan B for you. Listen, God uses imperfect sinners, I'm one of them, to do what he put us here on earth to do. If you wait until you are perfect before you serve God's plans, you will never serve God's plans because none of us are perfect. Look at the people, look at the per person on your left. That person's a massive sinner. <laughs> look at the person on the right. 
They're an even bigger sinner than that one you just looked at. <clears throat> because God uses imperfect people like me to accomplish his plans and purposes. Aren't you glad for that? Amen, everyone? <clears throat> and so God has no plan B for you. Um, at, let me give you an example. Do you guys know who this guy is? This is uh, Chuck Colson. Uh, he was one of the most powerful men back in the day as he was the assistant to President Nixon. And many of you have probably heard of the scandal that these, these men were involved with called Watergate. And that Watergate scandal moved Mr. Chuck Colson into prison. This is his actual mugshot. And while he was in prison, uh, Chuck Colson met Jesus in a real way. He began a relationship with him. And it was in prison that he became a believer. And then he started to see that there are so many incarcerated men who need Jesus. And so he was leading people to prison. And then when he got released from prison, uh, Mr. Colson started what's called Fellowship Prison Ministries. And this ministry is still going today and is in 112 countries around the world. And it has led literally millions and millions of men and women into a personal relationship with Jesus. <clears throat> now, this is very important. I want you to catch this because this is true of your life and mine. God knew when he created Chuck Colson that one day Chuck was going to go to prison because God knows the future. And, and I never believed God knew the future, but if you follow Jesus long enough, you'll be like, oh yeah, he knows the future. <laughs> And so God, before Chuck took his first breath when he was born, he said, I know my son's going to go to prison and that he will meet me there and then come out. And I have worked those sins and mistakes into his plan that I have for him. I'm not saying God caused him to sin. He didn't. But God said, I'm going to work those sins and mistakes into my plans and purposes for his life. And so here's the point. No matter what you've done wrong, no matter what you're doing wrong, God has no plan B for you. He's calling you today. He uses imperfect people to accomplish his will. Think about it, parents. God uses imperfect parents to raise us. And those of us who are parents, he's using imperfect parents to raise our children. That's just the way God does it. So can I just encourage you? Don't wait till you have your life all cleaned up to follow Jesus. You just start now. You start now. God's still cleaning me up. Hang out with me long enough. You'd be like, oh, yeah, you still got some flaws, brother. Oh, oh. And so we, we just got to get going on it. And God will gladly lead you into what he has for you. Okay. So let's move on to the next thing. What else do you need to know about God's calling for you? Here it is. God provides his power to help me fulfill my calling. This is huge, okay? Listen, this is so important. God will give you his power to do what he put you here on earth to do. God will never call you to do something that he won't provide his power and or his people to help accomplish it. Because see, what keeps some of you from volunteering or from moving into a job that God's really calling you towards is that you just think, oh, I can't do that. And if you're like me, your insecurities uh, just arise and you think, ah, oh, I don't have the ability. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not smart enough. You know, fill in the blank. I'm not what. And that keeps you from stepping into it. But let me tell you this. Whatever God asks you to do, he's going to give you the power to do it. Every single thing God asks me to do that I don't think I can do, he provides me the power and or the people to get it done. And thank God. I'll give you an example. I had no idea that I could speak and teach until I started following Jesus. I had zero idea of that. I was not a teacher when I was in high school. In my 20s, I wasn't teaching. Hey, everybody come around. Let me teach you something. I was terrified of speaking in front of people. I never wanted to speak in front of people. And then God started showing me after I surrendered to his call, he started to show me that he's like, Dave, I'm in you. I'll help you teach. It's not you. You don't have to do this alone. And I'm like, okay, thank you. You know, and every Sunday I step on these, 
walk on this stage. I just did it today. I say, Jesus, I step out of me and I step into your power. I can't do this without you. And then Christ who's in me, hopefully, then helps me do what he's called me to do. Does that make sense? So um, let me show you a verse. I love this verse. Uh, if you ever feel insecure about being a parent, insecure on your job, insecure something God's called you to do, you need to screenshot this. It says in Philippians 2.13, For God is working in who? You. Giving you the desire and the what? The power to do what, what pleases him. God says, listen, I'm working in you and I'm giving you the desire and my strength, my power, my wisdom to do my calling for your life. Parents, God is working in you to help you parent his children. When you're on a job and you're like, I can't do this. God's saying, I'm working in you to do that job I've called you to. You're a volunteer, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to ruin anybody. And, uh, God's working in you. So l- let, me, let me say it this way. Because some of you may be thinking like, oh, wait, Dave, Dave, how does God work in me? Like, so does God from heaven go, my power's on you, and then whoosh, I catch it. Oh, thank you. No, 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 it's better than that. When you become a believer, you start following Christ. Watch this. What happens to you? You're like, Jesus, come into my life. Boom. Jesus Christ comes into you, your body. Like, stop and think about it. You're like, well, how does Jesus come in, inside of me? Through his Holy Spirit. So you know what the Holy Spirit is? It's Jesus in spirit form living in you. Wow. Now we forget this. This is huge. So watch this. If Jesus Christ is in me right now, and according to the Bible, he is, then it's not just Dave up here speaking. It's Jesus helping me do what he called me to do. Does that make sense? So let me say it this way. You might want to screenshot this because some of you are going through some really hard times right now. And, and, and God wants you to know these three truths, which I've put together in kind of a memorable phrase. Okay. Christ is in me, he is with me, and he is for me. Okay, Christ is, if you're a believer, he is in you. Jesus Christ is inside of you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he is with me. He'll never leave you or forsake you, no matter what you're going through. You know those difficult problems you're going through right now? He is with you always. Whatever you face, you will never face it alone. Ever. He's with you. And he's for you. Romans says this, Romans 8 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? So Christ is in you, he is with you, and he is for you. So I want us to just let these three truths sink in, because some of you are going through tough times right now, and, and catch this, some of you have some problems around the corner where these truths are really going to help calm you when you start getting anxious, okay? So I want all of our locations, just say this with me out loud and say it as if you're saying it to yourself, okay? Ready, one, two, three. Christ is in me. He is with me. He is for me. That's really good. Let's do that again. Christ is in me. He is with me. And he is for me. Okay, so next time you're having a problem at work, and your boss maybe or you know comes to you and you're like Ugh. or you've got a difficult project you just say Christ is in me he's with me thank you lord you're with me thank you that you're for me not against me that i'm never alone thank you some of you go through a difficult marriage situation and you feel so hurt and broken by the things that have happened to you and you feel so alone at times you need to say i'm not alone Christ is inside of me. He is with me. He'll never leave, you'll never leave me, Jesus. And thank you that you're for me in this very difficult, painful relationship. Thank you. Christ is in you. He is with you. And he is so for you. He's so for you. So, God has a calling on your life. Um, Let me ask you this question. When you got saved, you remember when you accepted Jesus into your life? Why didn't God just whisk you away to heaven right then and there? 
Right? You're like, okay, you said the prayer. You're at a church. Jesus, please come into my life. Why didn't you just die? It goes straight to heaven. Why not? Like, why, why, did God, why did God leave you here on earth? Because he still has a calling on your life. That's why. He's not done with you yet. The reason you're still breathing is God still has a calling on your life. You're not an accident. You're not even here at church by mistake today. God wanted you to hear these words. He says, I have a plan and purpose for your life. I have a calling on your life. It started the day you were born, and I'm calling you every day to live out my plans and purposes for your life. And I will empower you for them, and I will guide you into them. And then when we're in heaven together, we can celebrate for trillions of years. And I will reward you for fulfilling your calling, and I will bless you for fulfilling your calling, and I will allow you to share in my glory. We will even cheer you on in heaven, it says in Thessalonians, for fulfilling your calling here on earth. And so you say, so why am I still here on earth? Because life is a test. The reason you're still breathing, this is super important, is that God is testing you to see if you'll be faithful to your calling. God has given you, think about what he's given you. In many of, in many of your cases, he's given you a job. He's given you money. He's given you relationships. Uh, many of us, he's given us a family. He's given you talents and gifts and spiritual gifts. He's given you time. He's given you all kinds of things. And he's saying, listen, life is a test. I'm seeing if you're faithful with little, you can be faithful with much. Not only here, but in heaven. Did you know in heaven you're going to have responsibilities? People think we're just going to float on a cloud. That's not true. That's not in the Bible. You will do some resting in heaven. The Bible says that if you're faithful here on earth to your calling, you will have even greater responsibilities in heaven and you will love them. Because in heaven, it won't feel like work because heaven's a perfect place. And so um, life is a test and God is testing you and I to see if we'll be faithful with what he's given us. A lot of people think, well, my calling must be that I am a volunteer in church. That's part of your calling, but it's far more. Well, my calling is to be a mom. That's part of your calling, but it's so much more. My calling is to be an accountant. That's part of God's calling, but it's so much more. And so we want to help you because, understand it, because God is calling you. Now listen, God's calling on your life has been ringing since the day you were born. Let me ask you this. Have you picked up the call yet? Because for some of you, God's been calling you, and it's ringing, and it's ringing, and it's ringing. And like for me, the first 25 years of my life, that phone was ringing. I was like, I don't want to pick it up. Mm -hmm, I got my own plans. And then at 25, I said, okay. Let me give you a tip. With God's call on your life, don't send it to voicemail. Don't, don't let it call waiting. Don't send it to call waiting. Don't let it ring and ring and ring. We only go around once, my friends. We only go around once. Life is so short. I can't believe that I just turned 30. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> it just goes by so fast. Okay, I'm not 30. I wish. <laughs> and so pick up the phone. Pick it up. Because I tell you, when you say, God, I'm going to begin to discover and develop and live out and learn your plans and purposes for my life, then you're doing what God put you here on earth to do. And I'm telling you, over the next few weeks and months and years, I'm telling you, this series, for some of you, it's going to change your life. I heard a series like this when I was 26, and it changed my life. It's going to do the same for many of you. So I'm very excited for you. So we're going to pray a prayer, and then I'm going to give you, don't, if you're watching online, uh, don't tune out, because I have some resources after this prayer I think you'll find very helpful. Okay? So we're all going to pray this prayer together. And um, it's just the beginning of saying, God, I want to know your calling. Okay, so let's all pray this out loud together. Just pray this from your heart, whatever location you're at. Just say these words with me. Just say, dear God, say this with me. You created me for a purpose. I don't want to miss my calling. Today, I commit to discovering and fulfilling your plans and purposes for my life. You made me for a relationship with you. So I want to get to know you 
and love you and trust you. Thank you for sending Jesus to pay for my sins. I receive your forgiveness and I commit to follow you as my Lord and Savior. I invite you into every area of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, while that seems like a simple rote prayer, if you prayed that from the heart, that was one of the most powerful prayers you prayed besides your prayer of salvation. Because now you're saying, God, I'm turning from my plans to yours. And God will gladly show you what his plans are. And he'll gladly take your sins and your mistakes as he has mine and still is and weave them into his plans and purposes. And he will empower you to do what he put you here on earth. And you'll have times when you're doing what he put you here on earth and it'll be better than any high or any drug or any thrill that you've had in your life. Because when you're in the middle of God's plans and purposes, there's nothing better, nothing better. And when you and I get to heaven, you know what? When we stand before him and he asks us those two questions, did you get to know my son, Jesus? You'll say, yeah, I didn't just know about him. I knew him, I knew him. I did life with him. And did you fulfill the calling for which I put you on earth to fulfill? And you'll say like me, not perfectly, but I finally surrendered and began to, and I did the best I could imperfectly. In those moments, man, you're gonna look at Jesus and be so thankful that you lived his plans and purposes. Don't get to heaven and have the biggest regret where you're like, oh, oh shucks, yeah, I did get to know you, but I just lived my plans. Don't do that, don't do that. Because if you're faithful, Here's what Jesus says in the parable of talents. He said, he said, if you're faithful to your calling, come on in and enjoy your master's inheritance. You're going to bawl like a baby. <gasps> and all these rewards that you have for trillions of years, and Jesus will wipe every tear from your eye. Be beautiful. Be beautiful. And I'm going to see you. We're going to high five. We're going to shaka. And we're going to go. It was worth it. It was worth the difficulties. It was worth the sacrifice. It was worth it all. Amen? Okay. So let me give you some resources. Um, I'm going to be teaching a class called Discover Your Purpose. It's going to be on Zoom, August 24th and 31st. Um, I think it'll be an hour and a half, two hours long. And I'm going to teach some things. Like if you don't know if you're in the right job, you should go through this. If you have high school students... Uh, you should send them to this. If you have 20-year-olds who don't know what God's plans and purposes are, send them to this. Um, if you're retired you don't know what God wants you to do, come to this because we're going to look at how God made you because that points you towards many things he wants you to do. So that's coming up. You can sign up with the QR code or go to guest services to sign up or go to our website. Okay, so that's coming up. Also, this is huge. If you weren't here last week, uh, we put together a What's Your Purpose small group resource. It's free for everybody. Plus, we have this great book called What on Earth Am I Here For? It's a mini book by Rick Warren, uh, the first seven chapters of The Purpose Driven Life. If you've never read this, I highly recommend it. Um, if you haven't picked this up, you can use this QR code here, um, or you can go to guest services, or you can go to our website. But, but let me tell you this, this is so important. A lot of people want to come on Sundays, but they don't want to get in a group, a small group. But it's, I, I want to just ask you to, to do what you did today. Keep coming the next five Sundays to church, okay? So keep coming to church for five weeks as we do this series. And then get in a small group. What's a small group? You just gather with one to two or more people for an hour and a half during the week. You can do it on Zoom. You can do it in person. And you go through the things that we didn't have time to cover. For example, I shared with you three of the eight things about your calling today. In your small group, you're going to learn the remaining things. So I shared with you three. You'll, you'll learn the remaining parts in your small group. Um, now, here's another thing I say to you, and I know, I know if I were you back in the day, I wouldn't want to hear this, but some of you are like, oh, I'm just going to grab the book and do it on my own. And I get that, you know, I, I'm, I have a very independent nature at times, um, but God wants you to go through this with other believers. In Acts chapter 2, it says that the early Christians, they gathered together in the temple courts to hear God's word, and they met in homes and small groups. And so I want to ask you, just give God six... Six small group, 
hours of your life in the next six weeks to learn more of what we don't have time to cover on Sundays and more importantly to learn from others and to connect with other people in this church. It's a large church but the more you get in a small group it becomes small to you and God want, I really think God wants you to do that. So how do you do it? Grab a few of these books on your way out uh, or if you're watching online download the resources and here's what you do is you go to a few friends and you say hey you want to discover God's purpose for your life? Let's go through this together for an hour and a half for the next six weeks. Meet online, meet at Starbucks, meet wherever you're comfortable, at your house, and you watch how God's going to use that small group. I can't tell you how many people in our church have said, my life and my growth in Christ has, and his word has grown dramatically when I got connected to a small group. Okay, last thing I want to say is this. Um, if you are in a small group, uh, or you'd like to start one, even if it's just you and a friend or two, I want to invite you this Wednesday to join me for one hour on Zoom. I'm going to just give you a quick training. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this. I'm going to give you some tips. How do you deal with people who start vala owing, talking too much? What do you do with people who start hijacking the gathering? Like, oh, you know, what do you do with people that might get judgy towards somebody? How do you handle that kind of stuff if it happens? And so just come to that. It's on Zoom. You can uh, use that QR code or go to our website to sign up. And uh, I'd love to meet you at that time, too. So those are just some tools to help you. That's it, everybody. Um, I'm super excited for you as you enter into this season and this new journey of discovering more of God's plans and purposes for you. So thank you so much. May God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Hey, thank you for watching today. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. I encourage you to share this video with a friend and don't forget you can join us live every Sunday online or at one of our New Hope Winter locations. Thank you so much for watching today. May God bless you.